short men here, they better get up the front a bit. Everybody move up a little bit, here we go. Now, don't forget if you get to Adelaide, at 5 Percy Street Prospect, the original RM William shop, used to be the factory, they've got a museum there. Now, somewhere to go in Adelaide, all the old things they used to make, it's pretty good. Now this is the harness maker section, that's why it's the working museum, because there are sections like this where I do my work, and do demonstrations. This is the Pearson, the harness maker's machine. Big singer for upholstery work, canvas work, and some leather work. There we go. There's a genuine condamine bell stamped on the tongue. They don't come much bigger than that one. Now see the little red and black box up there with a nice light on it? It came from Darwin. It was used for World War II and Cyclone Tracy. I just pressed the button here. I won't press it too hard. Now see the sign up there, Big Tree? Does anybody know what Big Tree was? Petrol, motor spirits, there's only a shilling a gallon then. No one believed me, so I found a few more things. I've got a Big Tree motor spirits tin. I've got a Big Tree box end. Of course the petrol came with the tins in the boxes. Lots of different ones in the roadside relic section. And Big Tree motor oil. No one can argue with me now. <laughs> and here's another little company used to be down south. Kangaroo petrol. There you go, there's a kangaroo sticker. Now, I've got another one here for the motor car, made in America. You put that on the spare wheel. After you vacuum the car, you just have to pump up the spare wheel again. There's another one in the roadside relic section, similar, with a little electric motor. Now, I've got one here for the policeman. You put that round the prisoner, hands go in there, there's an adjustment there for little a prisoner, no one can get away. Now, one down here, I never want to use again. <coughs> there we go. We'll fold him up and we'll put him away. Now, challenge your wire strainers. 1886. Wire goes around through there, twist him round and round, strains the wire up, ties its own knot, there's your wire cutter there, and I don't think you can buy a wire strainer today that ties its own knot, so we're going backwards. Now, World War I, barbed wires laying all around the trenches, soldiers set a few up, so you can put your head in there, look out the little slip, that was your peephole. No one knew which one had a head in it. <laughs> now, well worn one again. 1917. Goes on the end of the 303 rifle. Soldier crawled along in his belly, and that's how he cut through the barbed wire. There's your wire cutter there. 1917. Now, your haystack's all packed down tight. 
You can't get an armful of hay. Drive that into the haystack. Release those ones. That's your hay puller. Loosen all the haystack up. Another one here, we've got to be careful with this one if we've got any Queenslanders. Instead of ring bark and the little trees with an axe, lock that one on, spin him round, was quicker than the axe, so we'll keep him down here so no one can use him. Right here, we're going to make some cakes. I've got my Hydro Mix Master, Hydro Mix Master painting pending, bowl and mix under there, turn the tap on. No water. Judy, check that water, please. I think it's turned on, they might be off. Oh. Turn it on for. Now we'll make another cake. Now, this next one, somebody made it up. But I think it would have done the job. Now we're going to make one more cake. Late 40s, early 50s, that one baker light. Now, I've got a new one for the year. It's about 1860s, 1870s. It's a big food chopper. See the chopping board at the bottom and the blade and the bowl goes round and round. So you put the food in there to chop up and away you go. Lovely old machine, the job's done. Now, I've got the Card Talk record play in this box, but I've got a few, few other things too. There's the Card Talk record player. Headlamp, mask, blackout plate, World War II. That's the way it goes. That one's off a of mercury. All I want is the other end of it, the mercury. That's what they put on the headlights when the bombers came. Now I've got another new one for the year. It's about eight, eight it's uh, just got to open him up, you put your razor blade in there, close him up, and that's how they used to sharpen it. <laughs> but if you didn't have one of those, you might have had one of these ones. Just wind him up, press the button, there you go, you can have your shave, no batteries needed, beauty. Now, this is an original Wayfield spur found in Catherine. Wayfield spur quite famous. There's a pair in the cabinet there I made. All made out of one bit of steel, no welding. Just split him up the centre. Now, I found this one down at Jamestown at the Railway Hotel. You put your cigarettes in there. First one came out that way, second one out that way. There's your ashtray, there's your lighter. And I say that's the clamp. Well, they clamp in the back seat of the car so the ladies could have their puff. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> now we're back to the Card Talk record player. It's all in the plastic bag. This is called Card Talk. They used to make these for the missionaries. Put him down like that. This is the proper little 78 for the record player. It's all talk, all Bible stories. Pick that one up. Record goes on there. There's your needle, little 78 needle, got to change him fairly often. So that becomes your speaker, and you have a pencil or a skewer, and away you go. This so-called record player is not a toy. It is designed for a special purpose. Thus, Recordings Incorporated is a missionary society whose job is to cater for people who cannot read. Do you know that? Two-thirds of the world's people are illiterate, and that there are about 6,000 languages and dialects in the world. To date, gospel records or tapes have been made in about 4,000 of these. They have been sent back to the areas where the language is spoken, and on a simple card talk like this. There we go. Not many people have seen those, and their gospel recordings are still going in Sydney today, but they don't have cardboard record players anymore. Well, I can show you what they had after this one, and what they're probably still using today. 
little winder record player here, no batteries, no power, no spread. And this cassette player, no batteries, no power. Just put it on play and turn the handle. Mount Isa Rodeo. There we go. I think they're still using that one today. Now, I just put this little box away and I've got the Bushman's carbide light. Some stations still use these. The last drover I was working for in 89 was still using them. Shearers used to use them in their quarters. I just put a bit of water in here. Now up there there's some minus ones hanging, blue and the green one good for fishing, some push bike ones and the motorbike ones are the tail lights. Now this one we're using has got a double burner, this one's got a single burner. Carbide goes in there, that goes over the top, so the water goes slowly into the carbide, making the gas, that's a settling gas. It's got a bit of pressure up now, I can smell it, keeps me going. Now, carbide used to come from Tasmania, but now they import it. Like a lot of things we've got in this country, they go and buy it overseas, and there's a bit of carbide there. When the water goes on that, makes you set lean gas. That's the best light in the bush, easy to carry, no mantles to break. Lots of people want a carbide light. Now they have a noisy generator out in the stock camp, and they call that progress. That's a brilliant light, and really peaceful. No water, no light. Now, I've got a couple of hot air fans up here. Now the first one's a Kaiko, made in England. Could be 100 years old. Normally they use a kerosene burner. I'm going to use a gas burner because it's much quicker, and I'll cool you down. It's a little two-piston motor, and the hot air replaces the cold air. You can get a great big motor like this for pumping water and doing different jobs. There we go, we've got a pretty good breeze there. That's pretty old technology. Turn the handle falls off, and I'll get my little poker machine. I just gotta find a shilling. Got a shilling here, two shillings, that's two dollars. Shilling goes in there, one arm banded. If you get a full hand, you get a shot or a nip of whiskey. <laughs> Nearly time too. But if you didn't want to play the pokies, you can get your ten of peat green biscuits and a cup of tea and have a bet on the horses. You get your odds and all there. <laughs> now, I jump over the bar and we carry on. Don't take off in the lead. We start right down here. Something again for the men. Here we go on the picture frame. Now, this is the Verity outboard motor made in Sydney. Bit of a rare one. There's one outside in the lawnmower shed. You can come back and read about it. But new display I just done for the pack horse drove and the pack horse stockman. Bronco branding. That's the way we used to do all the branding on the cattle stations. Some places still do it today and now it's a sport. See the man on the horse pulling the calf up to the panel, put the leg ropes on and tip them over. So if you see some of these panels in the old yards in your travels, you know what they're for. Over here we go. Some old furniture. Over a hundred years old. Now, this is what I call the art gallery, but there's a good one here. Explosive bait for killing dingoes. Detonator goes on the red wires, bit of meat on this wire, battery inside, poor old dingo. Mm. Hairball's out of a bullock, this one cut in half. One in the bottle's a hairball out of a pig. One out of a cow, the cow survived. But I got a lot of little girls here chewing on their hair. I cure them here. Flying doctor said I'm doing a good job. Some things from TAA, they used to fly to Birdsville. This is the original Dolly's Prayer. Where you came in the door near the turnstile, I've got one blown up bigger so you can read the writing. We sell a few of those. The Queen at the opening of the Stockman's Hall of Fame at Longridge, reading Wally Mailman, R.M. Williams and Charlie Chambers. Part of my work restoring the wagon wheel. I'm a wheelwright, 
You see what I do with it outside. One of the original gum blossom babies by May Gibbs. And this is the lady that done all the wood carving. Same piece there, same corner cabinet, marble work around the corner. Prize issue one in 1912 and 1911. But if we move on down this way, after we go round, you can come back and have a good look. Roll along with me, then come back and have a good look. Here we go. Now these three original photographs in the cabinet were all taken in Grafton by J.W. Lent in 1873. He was a famous photographer and those photographs are over 130 years old. A shin plaster money for one pound was legal tender for the storekeeper, stop and station agent, Birdsville. A painting by Sir Winston Churchill. He was a Dublin art. Ticket of the Olympic Games for 11 shillings. Envelope that came in. A few more things from the Melbourne Olympics. A sampler done in 1870s. They're very collectible. And the reason I've got the Cobb & Co vehicles, I specialise in restoring vehicles that were built by Cobb & Co in the Cobb & Co factory in Charleville that ride on the leather suspension or thoroughbrace. There's a thoroughbrace wagon I've restored that you see outside and I'm working on the eight passenger car. Head on over this way now, work our way round. Give everybody a chance to get around the corner. If I do a book over 100 years old, some lovely cards, egg scales, leg irons and handcuffs from the Birdsville Police Station. And this is the portrait of Tom Cruise he left when he done the reenactment in 99. A bit more about it down here. That's when he restored the Leyland Badger truck. That's the original door off the truck. Another part of the truck was Harry Dean. He was the original mail contractor. Tom used to work for him, bought him out and carried on. Famous old man. And here's Harry Dean with the first two-way radio that had been a vehicle. This is the way the net. Used to be on the corner of the airport opposite the pub. Deteriorated over the years. I got the job from the council to restore it and now it's having the tourist information centre ready to go. Sewing things, binoculars and cameras, then I've got the kids toys. You could have something for the kids but it's all pretty collectible now. Wind up trains, electric train, lone ranger records, sample bags, pedal cars. Now this pedal car down here was made in the Holden factory in Adelaide. 46.47 when they're gearing up to make the first Holden car. I'll walk away to the back of tins and packets and I'll point out some interesting ones. Move right up this way, we'll all fit no trouble. I don't think we've got any smoke, it's all too healthy looking. A couple more to catch up, here we go. Yeah, one tin here like a flask. Bent round to fit in your hip pocket, see the bend in him. Now this store is about five of the rarest Australian tins. I've got four of the five. Far lap. Sunny Boy, Sunny Girl, V8, I haven't got a Captain Kettle. Then I've got the Brophy collection up here. Fred Brophy the Boxing Troop comes at races, only Boxing Troop left. But he's also got the pub at Cracker near Theodore on the way to Rockhampton. Only pub in Australia where the bouncers throw you back in, they won't throw you out. Now just have to change your shirt, Judy. Now this washing machine, when I turn the handle, you see how it agitates both ways. I'll give it a spin and I'll get out of the road. I do know a lot about this one, what it's called or how old it is. Well, the next one is the banner washer. It's about a hundred years old and it's got a pretty good action too. <laughs> the next one here, like a barrel, is the Lily White washing machine. It goes back to the 1880s. And what I just found, you just had to go like that all the time. No trouble. I will all go over to the old shop. There we go. The new idea for women, <coughs> sixpence weekly, changes collars about four times. All the old tins and bottles, cash register scales and advertisements, some of my favourite ones, or the ice cream buckets for thrippence each. See the canisters with the kangaroo, kookaburra, koala and emu? The one of the emu facing out is a billy can. That's the first one bushels bought out. Not many about like that in the bully can shape. See the wooden box top shelf? Kangaroo one minute churn by Heinz of Sydney. Over here in the dairy section, 
I got the kangaroo butter churn that came in the box. And definitely make butter in one minute. and the Dairy Act from 1926. But we'll all go over to the roadside relics. This is popular collectors all over the world. Charcoal cooler out of the ruins in town, out of the old Royal Hotel. All lined with charcoal, whip the charcoal down, charcoal contained the moisture, breeze going through, kept everything cool. Or the bee in this case, made for big bottles. Put in your Colgardi safe because you've got more bulk of water. But up here I've got the first and second fridge. But I just point out these couple of plates as we go. The lady that worked in that Fowler factory got two, and all the places they made crockery for, she put the base stamps all over the plates. Makes them very collectible. There's your Twomba Hospital, Mount Eyes and Mines, Coon and Barrow and Country Women's Association, Broken Hill Hospital, Sydney Hospital, Launceston Hospital, BHP, Adelaide Steamship Company, Melbourne Steamship Company, Nation all over. Now, <laughs> This is about the 1923 white frost refrigerated with the icy balls. Gas in the cylinder ammonia, heat up one end, other end of frost up, put that in the box, that'll keep it cold for 24 hours, but before your 24 hours are up, you'd have to get the other cylinders ready for the changeover. About 1930s, whole from got it all together, similar type of box, cylinder stayed in the box, and your primus or burner went under the other end. So that's the first and second fridge. That was called heat exchange. A bit more about it up here. There's the third fridge. I've got one outside. I'll point it out as we go. Quite a few mouse traps and rat traps, but there's a good one here. Dead easy. So we'll all go over to the top shelf. Where's all the ladies? Here we go. Just have to change your shirt, Jenny. All the things they used to have on the table, tops out of water bags, glass rolling pins, foot warmers, shaving mugs, and the moustache mug. Now, this little sapphire and diamond crown in the shape of a pin was given to Captain and Mrs. Clark by Princess Alice at that party in 1928. That was the invitation, and that was to get something from royalty there, turkey plate on the bottom, Pretty good bottle up here, the Cooley bottle. Some more old money in this cabinet of money scales. Another big shin plaster money for five pounds. And this one I've got to keep an eye on. Don't want to go across the desert. Jessica made for the bedroom, there you go. This one I call the throne. Was stolen out of the building in King's Cross over 40 years ago. And the police is still on the job. Little organ came out of the hospital. All folds up into one box, a portable organ. Variety of different telephones, all the ink things in this cabinet. But we'll all go around to the old hospital. Now, this is the old hospital section. I've got the old dentist drill foot operated. It's a good book for two shillings. Be your own doctor. And how to keep young after 40. Wanted some copies to sell, never got them done, so I'm missing out on a lot of money. Pretty good collection of Traeger radios, a couple have got the pedals, a couple I've just found. This is the portable Traeger from Pandy Stock Camp, and this one from Mount Leonard. Paratroopers bike, World War II, look out we don't wake the babies. But we'll all go over to the wool industry. Now, this is the first electric shearing gear from Isis Down Station near Isisford, west of Blackhall. And that electric shearing gear was invented in 1907. And this is our Moffat Virtue shearing gear from Cadilla Downs. 32 stands up the middle of the shed, 
16 stands either side. Bit about it here, 1901. Rabbit traps and dingo traps. Surveyor's chain hanging right through, 22 yard chain measure, 100 links in the chain, 80 chain to the mile. Needle for machine up here, pedal fretzel. Sit down, pedal like a bike, blade goes up and down, cut out the bits of wood. 1870s. Leather canteens for carrying the wood on the pack saddle, horse bits and safety stirrups. And this is one of my best collections, my hand hook collection. When I put a collar on a horse or a mule, the hames go around the collar, hame hooks on the side, that's where your trace chains drop on, and they've all got different names, stamps and shapes. Over 260 different ones, best collection in the world, quite a variety of kangaroos, wallaby, dingo, emu of the emu bird, an emu, swan brand, a couple of Jewish ones, an Auckland and Riverina, the Alderman, the Bushman of a man cracking a whip, the cockatoo with a cockatoo bird, a couple of American ones with the bison, one from Tassie with the tiger, World War I with the soldier's badge, and Hayes, a New Zealand company still going today. I just have to change the shirt, dude. Well, with the poison they used in these, kill more men than it did pear. Arsenic peroxide that came in the jars. Mm. At the bullet's goal for a long time, the horn is I had a pretty tough old life. I just found him a few mates. Oh. This is about the troller tree pull out, all goes together. There's one down the back. And you'll see this pump working directly, you'll be able to come back and read about it. Yeah, that's your spin dryer. 46 model, the same as me, half an antique. <laughs> that's the third fridge I was talking about, that's a Holstrom. Same working parts in the back as the ones inside. Now a couple more washing machines I just found for the ladies. They're both 1890 models. And the first one's the Ocean Motion and I'll show you why. There we go, 1890 Ocean Motion, just like new. The other one's a torpedo, you just pull the pin out, that's how they're done the washing, little short lady. <laughs> <laughs> then you take the lid off, spin your little ring around and the water went back into there, 2 This is the wagon type 1, and that's a thoroughbrace wagon on a Cobb & Co coach undercarriage. Up there in the little shed, little one third size Cobb & Co coach built in Toowoomba around about the 50s. And I'm working on the eight passenger coach. Put the 44 gallon drum in the back, wheel it out to the curb, and that's how they sell the fuel. Fuel motors here, this is a Bassey Harris open crank. This is a New Zealand motor, an Anderson motor working the crusher, little Lister, International, Simplex, 1915 Petter, and a 1925 new record drag saw. That was a Melbourne company, little open crank motor. Well, you might start the old pedal up and give it a bit of a run. Just got to get a bit of petrol to prime him. Normally I'd start this one on petrol and change over the kerosene, but I've got petrol right through, 1915.
couple of months, start the Anderson up and crush a few more rocks. one, this one's similar. See all the spokes have been blacksmith welded into an axle. Pretty good job, pretty hard to do. Over here, British gun nest car. Light and safe transport for the children of the household and their gun nest or nanny. That's what the kids are go to school in when they go to school. But we'll all go through to the wheelwrights and blacksmith shop. We'll fit in here no trouble. Move right up in the loop to the car thing. shop. The first base for making wheels and repairing wheels. A bit about some of the tools here. Second base for building the wagons. Third base for the tire benders and the upsetting machine. And the last base for the blacksmith work. This is the eight passenger Cobb and Co coach I'm working on. Might be an original coach, but it's nearly all original line. We've got the Cobb and Co iron work round to the left that I've collected and using. And this is an original Cobb and Co roof rack for this coach. Just got to straighten it up on the forge, but it's all there. But we'll all go round to the left to a shed I just built a couple of summers ago. Look out for the railway tracks, there's all the Victorian. <laughs> That's the last end I found just round the corner, of the indented one. 1890s. 1910 end, 1920 complete cart, 1942 end, furfy trolley, pig trough. Tractor seat stamped underneath, rollers, top end, another lid and a swindle bar. I want to read the Pitman shorthand on this one and the Pitman shorthand on the 42 one. Here we go. Water is a gift of God, but beer is a concoction of the devil. Don't drink beer and the brewery is going to sue them, so they changed it. Water is a gift of God, but beer and whiskey concoctions of the devil come and have a drink of water. But that one's also got a stalk carrying a baby. Under the stalk there's a bit of Pikmin and it says produce and populate or perish. <laughs> also it's got good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. Mm. And in the war, all the soldiers got round the furfy cart, having a drink of water, telling a few stories and a few lies and that's how we get that good Australian saying, that's a furfy. And you hear a lot now of these politicians going on, except for Johnny, except for Johnny, of course. <laughs> now, this is an interesting old machine from a sheep station. That's the top of it. That's what they used to put the daggy wool through to clean it up. Would have been a lovely job, big cloud of dust. I will all go around the rails to the hay shed. This is a horse gears or a horse works. They used to use these for pumping water, working the shearing shed, in mine for working crushers. This one operates the chaff cutter. The part at the end of the shaft is intermediate or gears that gears it up. 
I've got two mules here. Mules are part of our history in the outback. A mule is a donkey father and a horse mother. Both these mules have the same father. He's a mammoth jack donkey imported from America. He's at Geelong in Victoria. Belle's mother is a Belgium imported from America. The Belgium is the biggest breed of horse in the world. She's at Holbrook in New South Wales where they breed these mules for me. Bella's five, Jim's only a baby, he's only two. His mother's half Belgium, half Percheron. So get Bella and put her in and we'll make a bit of child.
You see, this is just a source of power. It's part of the museum. Can be used for demonstrations. And like a lot of things here, it's got a practical use. I'll we'll walk it down the back of the hay shed now to the three strange pumps. I just have to change the shirt, Jane. Yeah. Hercules water pump came out from England. It was sold in Sydney in 1910 by Gibson Battle and Company. That company's still going in Sydney. When Fred pushes the horse gears round, you see the water come up the chain and it'll carry water up 40 foot. It'll cross that little furby top. Here we go, now watch that chain. got a chain and washers. According to that advertising in there, it'll carry water off 40 foot too. Pretty good flow there. Now, I've got a little well bucket here for the stockman or drover to pull up their canteens or buckets. Easy to carry. And you can go back and read about this one. It's about 1890s, but little buckets. They call it a purifier. I don't need to see three pumps like those anywhere. There's the toilet tree pull all up and down the fence complete. These are the tiring plates. Wagon wheel goes on the top, steel tyre goes in the fire, and the tyre gets hot, it gets bigger, lift it over the wheel, get the water on, and they shrink on tight. Fred wife is stuck with a box and fruit, bullet hole in the windscreen. If you want to know about that bullet hole, you have to go to the Krakow Hotel, and that'll tell you the true story, or come here for races, you'll be here. Little pump shed there, well there's a Bussicott farm pumper, will start up. Yeah. Sure. 